Hey everyone, I'm Prez. Welcome back to episode 17 of Cabrillo, our city set here in beautiful Mendocino County, California. Today we're going to be moving across the river from downtown. We're going to be working on an industrial corridor that will lead us to the, um, the port of Cabrillo once we get around to building that. We're going to be building the entire uh, outline of the surrounding area and also an important bridge that will connect the city to another suburb. Um, first though, Inspiration Station, our segment where we look at what we're basing the, this episode off of. First, this kind of light industry that you see throughout West Berkeley and, and Oakland and Emeryville. This is the kind of scale of industry I'm going to be building in detail in this episode. We're also going to be building a bridge, and it's based off of the Richmond-San Rafael Bridge, uh, as well as the Bay Bridge. The Richmond-San Rafael Bridge is awesome. As you can see, you can bike over it. It's a really long bridge, longer than what we're building, but I still think it's a useful reference because the views are incredible, and I want to capture views like that in this as well. Uh, we're also looking at the eastern span of the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge, which is two separate spans. The eastern span has been replaced in the past, though. This is the current form of it, um, but it used to look like this completely different from what it looks like now, but it, it collapsed uh, in the Loma Prieta earthquake, which also led to other freeway collapses in the Bay Area, and um, it was, instead of retrofitting the existing bridge, this, it was the same cost to replace it with this new self-anchored suspension bridge. We're also going to be looking at the you know, industrial freeway corridor in Portland, or what would have been the, the industrial freeway corridor. There was supposed to be a freeway going down um, along this hillside by this industry, but it actually never got built. But I just wanted to show you that because we're going to have a very similar location. I'll put a link in the description to a video explaining the um, industrial freeway in Portland in a little bit more depth because I think it'd be useful. But before we begin, we're working on this smaller industry area. This is the only um, part of this episode where I actually detail what I build. Um, this is just in South Cabrillo. I I'm first of all filling in some um, residential plots by the main line. You're going to notice a very strong zoning um, difference here because right when you cross the railroad, there's going to be a complete shift to industrial and commercial zoning. Um, no residential really over here, but I can imagine that um, after some uh, brown brownfield remediation, it, it's pretty likely that this will be turned into a residential area in the next 50 years at least, because it's so close to downtown. Um, but we're going to be, I mean, building it as an industrial area. Maybe we can have votes in the future on whether um, it should be converted and, and you know, converted to housing. We'll, we'll see how that goes. This video is a little bit different from usual. I'm not really focused on building distinct neighborhoods today like I usually do, because you might notice that in each video I try to create a distinct neighborhood that has a distinct history. I mean, you can notice that this industrial area has a very clear past and present and probably a future if you, if you really look into it, but um, it's not the main focus of this video. The, we're mostly going to be planning um, out a bunch of networks and placing undetailed um, buildings just to get an idea of what the industrial corridor is going to look like and what the port of Cabrillo is going to look like, which is going to be a future video. We're not going to start the port in this episode. Um, but so right now, just this is the only area that I actually detail. Another thing I'm, I'm actually doing right now is I am making um, my first mud flat kind of it's very hard to make mud flats in in city skylines it's it's very hard to make wetlands generally um if you have any ideas for how to do this better let me know this is my first try at it i don't really like how it turned out but i definitely need to fill some shorelines especially um in what will be the area across the bridge that we build in this episode it's gonna have a lot of wetlands like this um let me know if you have any techniques for building this kind of stuff um in the comments below and I'm making sure to place a little bit of detail in here like some graffiti and props and stuff like that and, and this this area is basically complete uh, at least for now once again uh, season two vote could be uh, where we decide to make it residential but th yeah the, the theme I want to talk about in this episode because this is more of an expansion episode than a, a you know, building a specific neighborhood and explain, ex you know, exploring its history like we did for the last video. Um, I want to talk about how we're going to expand Cabrillo quickly, because if you might have noticed, I'm really bad at expanding my cities quickly, and, and my frustration with Columbia City is that I put too much detail into um, areas that were really not deserving of so much work, and they ended up taking up so much time that I never actually got around to building other areas, and I used too many assets and ended up 
you know, sort of screwing myself over because I couldn't continue to load the game uh, and have good performance. So, so I, I kind of solved the performance problem a little bit in Cabrillo, um, partially at least by removing a lot of the assets that I had before. But it goes beyond just trying to load the city after building a lot. I mean, I am getting some frame drops, but it's fine. I'm doing fine and I'm still using pretty high settings. So I've got some wiggle room. I'm more worried about making sure that I can build lots of stuff very quickly, at least relative to how I'm used to building. Because my previous series have taken years to complete or not even complete, like Columbia City was going on for a very long time and I didn't really complete much in the city even. And I'm very you know, unhappy with how that turned out. Um, and I love Columbia City, I just think I could have handled it a lot better. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that Cabrillo expands quickly, um, and I'm also able to produce videos efficiently. I mean, I'm going to have my, you know, semester start in the fall, and I really don't know how much I'm going to be able to upload. I'm hoping I can keep up once a week. We'll see. I've tended to end up uploading every two weeks in, in those times, which I'm probably going to be okay with. Mostly I'm worried, not, not so much with how often I upload, but how quickly we're able to expand. And I, I wanted to solicit suggestions in the comments for how you um, tends to expand your cities quickly like do you use zoning and, and if so how to make sure it's realistic because um, I've actually found a couple zoning techniques that might make some sense but I've also begun using uh, find it and hitting it's I think it's alt and then V and it just picks a random building um, within the parameters you've selected and I've tagged my buildings um, just CS Cabrillo suburb and then that's for the streetcar suburb buildings and I you know I'll go in and replace buildings that I don't think make too much sense but it makes for a nice diverse set of buildings that that um I've chosen as two by four lots almost exclusively like I choose my buildings and I do them pretty efficiently but I'm just wondering if I'm overlooking some things because I, I know there are a lot of people out there who are able to build cities really efficiently really quickly and keep a level of realism that's really respectable and I mean I I know I've made a tutorial on this in the past like two years ago on how I tend to make my cities um, realistic but build quickly and I really think I could have gone back and and actually just taken my own suggestions um, more efficiently there but I'm looking less for just general principles to follow and, and, mo and more for specific techniques you use general principles would also be great but I mean there, there's so many people out there watching and I, hopefully some of you have also encountered I mean, I'm sure some of you in, have encountered this dilemma after years of uh, playing the game or even not that long maybe you, you became enlightened early and figured out how to expand quickly and do it realistically I just I'd love to hear from you in the comments because I really do want to make sure that we're able to not only create you know, really unique neighborhoods, but also expand quickly enough where um, I don't get bored, none of you get bored, and we're really able to see the city progress. Because I also, I mean, in a reasonable amount of time, I want to get to a season two if possible, which I keep mentioning, but I, I really... You know, so I, I began the series with polls, right? And the polls were supposed to enable public participation, community participation, and how Cabrillo was built. And then I decided to just end those and, and postpone them to an indefinite you know, date because I didn't feel they made any sense. And that's because in City Skylines, you can't really help it, but your city is perpetual greenfield development like you're basically building with no context like there was nothing there before but you're trying to build a city that's rooted in history and that's kind of a contradiction so i've realized that i can only do one thing at once and in, in this case i'm currently building a city um with tons of different time periods at once you know and, and trying to acknowledge the history in each area and make a historically realistic city that's set in the present moment but it's based on historical changes that have happened over time but i can't also have people vote on um what to do uh, in a district or anything like that because that's not how like you don't um partake in those votes in the kind of weird uh time warping that occurs in city skylines like that's not how it works in real life and the idea with the season two would be to set it at one point in time and maybe have it progress over a reasonable amount of time maybe even a real life period of time um Maybe that, that would be a little bit infeasible considering how long construction takes, but you get the idea, like, have it so that there's actually a, a real sense of time um, in the city and and just begun, begin your work uh, in, in that kind of season two with a with a um, completed city. So, so that would be 
my idea for that and i've mentioned it a couple times and people seem to be in support of it but i mean to get there we have to build you know more rapidly than maybe even more rapidly than i'm building right now although i think i'm doing an okay job i just i still think it's worth asking for what you do in your cities to make your your building efficient because there's so many of you out there and i'm sure some of you have some useful um Know, suggestions that I might be able to use here because um, I really I'm loving Cabrillo and it's it's been amazing building the city it's my favorite city I've built really I, I think it's coming out a lot more realistically than any other city I've built and um, it, it I have a real connection to it because I love California I love Northern California I live in Northern California um, and I'm able to take advantage of all of these you know historical themes that I I love reading about exploring myself and and building them in game and it's great and, and i just want to make sure that um, i don't get stuck you know building repetitive projects that don't get too much done in the city so um yeah that's why i wanted to focus on that theme in this episode of, of expansion and, and how to do it uh, this is a once again a very non-traditional video because usually i'll talk about the neighborhood i'm building and its history and you know talk about urban planning but i'm just more talking about um you know, actually building in city skylines and what that looks like here um because it's it's really been you know a struggle to manage to get myself to, to even follow my own principles on, on how to build stuff one thing i, I mean it, certain th like uh, certain examples of how i've become more efficient is i don't place tree planters anymore like if i'm gonna place street trees i don't place planters i just use prop line tool and place the trees down i also don't really detail much stuff in the city at all um and i'm really planning on going back in the future and doing that uh, rather than doing it now um just because it allows me to expand a lot more quickly if the smaller details that a lot of people won't notice in the first place are, are not there um you know because we'll go back and that's fine and so that kind of suggestion is you know what i'd love to hear because i'm sure there's stuff i'm missing even after playing the game for so long Beyond all that, I think it's important to also communicate what the like the mission of this series is, because I mean that might sound stupid, like I'm just building a city, but I, I mean I am trying to explore a lot of issues that I haven't explored yet on the channel in urban planning and history, not only to make the city more realistic, but to get better at um, communicating these issues. And I mean above all, I just hope that we're all okay with. Cabrillo being a little bit of an experiment. Um, don't expect this to be the final form of my videos, and it's really an experiment in communication, in city building, in in so many things, and community building. Like, there's so many things I'm trying to achieve here, and it's not some grand master plan. It's just I'm currently enjoying what 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 we're doing here, and I think it's it's useful to I mean to me and hopefully to you, and and I'm just trying to. Um, you know, get better at communicating issues and see what role city skylines can play in communicating um, issues that I, I really care about. So, so it's once again, it's an experiment, and I really hope we're all okay with with that. And I really have to thank all of you who, I mean, comments, uh, who support the channel on Patreon or become a member, who, I mean, just just engage on the Discord or on Twitter, or anything like that. I, it's just, I'm really happy that we've built a really solid community that I love you know, sharing stuff with and discussing, um, you know, tons of stuff with uh, on the Discord and the comments, just everywhere. It, it, we've got an actual community going here, and I think Cabrillo's really bolstered that, and that was one of the main goals of the series, and, and I'm really happy that a lot of people are connecting with the content, because that's exactly what, I, what I'm looking for. So, feedback's always welcome, um, just et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I, I'm, once again, I just want to communicate here. This is an experiment. I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to poke around a little bit um, at, you know, types of content I haven't really built, you know, haven't made previously, and you know, even types of builds I haven't built previously, trying to not shy away from difficult stuff like these mud flats that, I mean, these mud, okay, these mud flats are okay when you're up close, but I gotta work on those. Anyway, this is the South Cabrillo kind of industrial area that we've built, industrial and commercial, really. Um, I'm a very likely candidate for more housing in the future, though. 
But these are the mud flats. They need work. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas there. Um, the neighborhood near uh, the industrial area is pretty mixed with some older and newer buildings. This is the bridge. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is called the San Benito Bridge. Uh, and that's the, the, in the in the thumbnail of the video, so sorry about that. It's the San Benito Bridge. The So the area on one side of it is going to be um, Cabrillo Harbor on the left side over there. And it's going to be, you kind of go right over the harbor. And on the other side um, is going to be an area called San Benito, which is going to be a Marin County-inspired area. San Benito is going to specifically be based on San Rafael. And we'll have some other areas over there, kind of on the um, north side of the bridge. And we're going to have a lot of stuff going on there. Sorry I didn't talk about the, the bridge itself a little bit more. That's the Commodore Berry Bridge asset by Do Not Eat, if, you, if you're wondering, by the way. I'll put it in the description. But um, that's that's the that's the bridge. It's uh, It should have been talked about more, but we had stuff to talk about here. Um, but yeah, basically, one side's the harbor, one side's going to be the area called San Benito. Anyway, it is time to close out here. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Quick shout-out before we go to Robert Dantube 8 Joe Fox, Christian Compton, and VLDC1000. Thank you all so, so much for supporting the channel over on Patreon. If you want to download Cabrillo's save game and look at how much the city's expanded um, or get early access to videos or anything like that, um, become a patron. Also, some benefits for YouTube members if you're interested. Uh, lots, of, lots of stuff down there. Just look in the description. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching so far, and I'll see you in the next episode of Cabrillo.